The, C the CPA is designed to measure the short-term effects of our television advertising. But that is just part of the story. Television advertising also has a long-term brand equity building value that until recently was hard to measure. We first presented the findings of our, of our new work in this area at AM 9.0 last year. I will now turn the podium over to, to, over to Leslie Wood, who will bring you up to date on her groundbreaking work. Stop it. He's got my clicker. <laughs> Dave, you've got the clicker. <laughs> At least I told her I would, I would do that. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he warned me. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Advertising builds connections to consumers. That's its primary goal. It works to create um, connections. It works to create um, emotional connections to consumers. And when it does a really good job, the consumer actually feels that that brand represents part of who they are, connects them. <clears throat> so the advertising creates consideration. And what do we measure? We measure short term. We see that that actually produces sales. But that connection carries. That connection drives long-term effects. We see that the purchasing happens out in the future. If we think about that theoretically, advertising drives consideration. Consideration drives repeat purchase. And down the road, you get loyalty and brand equity. All of you thought, have spent time in your lives figuring out how to spend money. That's part, you know, either your own money or your advertiser's money, but we've all thought about how to spend money and how to do it across time. Wouldn't, don't you need to have advertising evaluated properly for its full value in order to assess how much money you should be spending on each of your marketing variables? So when we think of short term, the kinds of measures we use are about buyers, penetration, um, how many buyers, what kind of buyers, purchase amount, we translate into things like buy rate, we translate into things like basket size, dollars, we look at trips, how many more purchase, how, how do you shorten your purchase cycle, all those kinds of measures, those are all short term drivers of sales. But what about the long term? When we, when, we, when, when we look at what's been driven, part of it's trial, and trial is really important. But we've spent five, ten years talking about putting the consumer in the center. We've talked about consumer is king, consumer is the center. But so many advertisers are looking at trial and looking at driving penetration as their primary pure goal. That means they're looking at non-consumers, people who are not actually currently buying their brand. Kind of a strange mix of thinking. You're not concerned about the people who currently buy your brand. And the people who buy your brand are not one big mass group of people that are all the same. They have different levels of loyalty. They have different engagement with the brand. They have different connections. They're a different part of the cycle. So what we did was set out to recognize trial, but also find a way of measuring that those consumers and where do they fit. So long-term effects one, the major contribution was to come up with a differentiator, a way of discriminating those buyers, se segmenting buyers into different levels of loyalty. We did this with a measure we call trial and depth of repeat. So the beginning period says trial. I need to you know, track how for a year, what have you been doing? And then when you, the first time you buy after a year, your trial, there's a T. The next time you buy, if it's the next purchase occasion for the category, you buy, it's a two. So we're counting consecutive buying occasions. Go back to zero if you don't buy the brand. You buy it again, you start counting. You st don't buy the brand, you go back to zero, et cetera, and it keeps going. When we presented long-term effects um, one, 
What we found, oops, sorry. When we, when we presented long-term effects to, there was quite a fervor. So we've gone and looked at um, uh, a, new, a newer version. We're talking about trial and repeat. You look on the left, for every dollar that you delivered short-term sales for, for trial, in the next year, you got 50 cents more purchasing. That was the value of turning somebody into a trier over the next year. And thanks to, to Kellogg's, we've, they've, they've been with us from the beginning looking at this, at this issue. But you look at switchers, wow, for every dollar, these are people who go in and out, you get almost $3. And if you look way on the, way on the uh, right side, you can see that you can get 3.3 times for every dollar spent. So lo driving loyalty, pushing people up the loyalty ladder gives you a lot more um, a bang for your buck. But that's not where most of the consumers are. So the yellow dots, couldn't figure out how to put the two bars next to each other, sorry. And I'm usually really good at this. Uh, it was a, a mystery with two, with two uh, axes. Anyway, you can see that most of the consumers, the yellow dots are the number of households, most of them are in that trial or that one, the switchers. Most of the households are in the low, the low level of loyalty. But the value of the people on the right is tremendous. And if advertising can help move people up that ladder and push more people to the right, that, that, that is a multiplier for your effective advertising. So you want to make sure that you're increasing the, the, the future purchasing power by moving people to the right. So how do we use these numbers? That multiplier of a 1.8, that's the long-term piece. But it's building on the piece that you already got from short-term. So your short-term's a 1. The long-term is a 1.8. Together, it's a 2.8. What do you do with that? We take the short-term lift. In this case, it was 14 cents um, without margins. It's the 14 cents um, sales for every dollar that was spent. We get a long-term multiplier of 2.8, and there's 39 cents. So that's, the, that's a multiplier to what your short-term advertising is. But why do you want to know what it is? If it's about two, we've been using two forever, why do you really care what your particular multiplier is? We know that advertising creates that connection to the consumer, does it across many, many different vehicles, it does it across any kind of platform, that, that level of loyalty is increased. Why do you want to know? Because if you accurately want to assess your marketing variables, you need to, bu and budget accordingly, you have to have your multiplier, not the average multiplier. You also want to know what drives higher multipliers, because this is where your dollar is going to keep, keep growing and keep building. So if you know what, how to build that, if you can track which brands have it and which brands don't, which activities you do increase your, your, um, your long-term multiplier, you can actually do something about it instead of just using an average. And also, it gives you a really good measure of how are you building a, a healthy brand? Are you building your, the equity in your brand as you go along? So phase two, we showed phase two at AM 9.0. And there was, there was quite a fervor, lots of interest, lots of discussion, um, lots of uh, people came forward. And Dave Poltrak said to me, we need to get a panel of experts in to help us. We want to make this really powerful. And so we did. We solicited the insights from a whole group of, of, of um, industry experts, not only inside Nielsen, not only friends, <laughs> all kinds of people who, who had deep and rich insights into what we should do. And we, a lot of grace, listen, but actually learn and, and improve the methodology. So here's the list. Jeff Dowd from Kellogg's, Neil and Ross um, from Nielsen, uh, Bill Harvey and Byron Sharp, J. 
Jim Donius and Mike Hansen. So we've got academics, we've got from all different segments of the industry helping us. We went out and we measured 23 brands. Um, eight of them we did year over year because they were from the prior period. So we have 31 studies in total. So we've got a lot of data for, to really look at. And what did we see? What were, the, what were the recommendations? The first one was to do some validation, and I'll share those results with you. Top long-term effects, this was from Neil. Thank you, Neil, for deeply spending enormous amounts of time. He, he uncovered a flaw in my math. And uh, to that, to him, I appreciate it. It was, it's really complicated. I missed it, so taking you through it would be, we'd be here all afternoon. But nonetheless, this, is, this, this particular piece brought the numbers down tremendously. It tremendously brought them down. But then we realized we were looking at advertising across the entire year. And when we only looked at the, the campaign period, when advertising was in force, the numbers went back up. And then there was a lot of discussion about what's the long-term period, what's the short-term. Increase that and it came back down. So it was an up and down. They all contributed in different ways. But those three are the ones that really changed the numbers that we were looking at. The other recommendations were don't only look at indirect effects. Look at, include direct effects of advertising. To that, we said, great. Instead of having a four-week measure, we said we, we're going to go and we're going to um, use a 12 week. We, instead of, it can't, shouldn't, Bill Harvey said, shouldn't be black box. So we, we, we let go of all our assumptions and numbers that we'd set in like a six and a 20. We got rid of them and just opened up for as much as we could measure. Um, measure other media, absolutely. Be more explicit about what, what our in tabs and samples are. And Bill, um, Byron Sharp said, recognize that you're not measuring everything. And that's absolutely true. We're not measuring everything. I'm proud to say we don't put in anything we can't measure. You know, we're researchers. But on the other hand, it's good to recognize that we don't have it all in there. So what did we see year over year um, from, from the earlier version? We actually see um, lower levels and less extreme um, things, um, multipliers. Validation, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to speed up here. Um, we, we use Len Lodish's methodology, and we see the same range of um, results as Len Lodish produced in 1991. This is using his method. It's not actually how we do work today. So if we go to the kinds of measures we have today and we compare what we're doing with what we could do in using that same method, same periods of time, we see a fairly good correlation, 33, um, a fairly good R squared of 33. We are sort of measuring the same thing, is the point. Um, and I'm going to quickly, the range of, was from a 3.5 to 1.2. The average is a 2.04, so roughly two where it's always been. And these are all of our studies. Um, year over year, we did eight brands year over year. They changed. So this isn't something that's the same year after year for a brand. It means that a campaign can make a difference. Um, the higher your short-term effect, the higher your long-term effect. Makes sense. If I've connected to the consumer in the short term, I'm connect, that message is carrying over to the long term. If, I'm, if I um, spend a lot of money on the brand every week, I also get higher long term. That makes sense because you're, you're, you're engaged with the brand, you're spending money. And part of that is purchase cycle. So the shorter the purchase cycle, the more often I buy, the higher the long term effect. But two things did not produce any. An R squared of zero was GRPs. So the amount of weight you use drives your short term, but it doesn't change the multiplier. So you get your short term, but multiply each one of those households, you got what you got in the short term. Doesn't change what happens in the long term. And I thought, well, maybe it's share of voice. Maybe it's about competitive impressions. Nope, still zero R squared. So what's next? 
new media. We want to include the whole world. We want lots more media. This is TV. We rec it's capable of being used against other media, and we welcome anybody will, who'd like to uh, forge the way into new media. And of course, we want to build this for many more, um, many more studies, so we have norms and benchmarks across all kinds of categories. Thank you very much.